Hello, this is Chuck Ridgeway. Today's program is all about high-speed outputs on the Horner OCS. And joining me today is Mr. Casey Gardner. How are you doing today, Casey? Not too bad. How's it going, Chuck? It's going well. So when we talk about high-speed outputs, what we're talking about today are the PWM or the uh, frequency or the set point controlled outputs that are available in just about every OCS that has built-in I.O. Now, in your application experience, what are some of the applications that can take advantage of high-speed outputs? Yeah, I think probably the most common one that I come across is usually using PWM with something like a PID control uh, for uh, heater output or, or just controlling heater through, again, those same means. Um, that's probably what's most common in my experience. What's a couple you've come across? Certainly one that I've come across are utilizing set point control outputs and kind of like a programmable cam type operation where you've got a machine which has a position that's being monitored through an encoder or a resolver or something similar. And then you want to be able to fire an output precisely either with a specific turn on point or turn off point or both. And then the um, set point controlled output is a great way of doing that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, because this isn't a live program today, make sure you ask your questions using the comment section and we'll go ahead and answer those questions, not in real time, but as quickly as we can. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Here is our agenda for today. We're gonna to talk about those built-in high-speed output functions, PWM and frequency. We'll also talk about set point controlled outputs. Now for some OCS products, you also have stepper type outputs, step and direction. However, we aren't going to be covering those in this particular video. We do have other videos where we cover that functionality and we'll try and put a link to one of those in the description for this particular video. All right, we're also going to talk briefly about the HE-XHSQ option card, which can add additional high-speed output capabilities to your system. We'll talk a little bit about application examples and of course we'll do a demonstration. Okay which Horner OCS products support high-speed outputs. And when we're talking about high-speed outputs, we're typically talking about two high-speed outputs per OCS model. So first of all, in the micro OCS, all models, including the relay output model, support high-speed outputs. That's because even on the relay output version, you've got a couple of solid state outputs that can be used in these high-speed output functions. Also, the XLE and XLT supports high-speed outputs, and it's built in to the models three through six. The X5 supports high-speed outputs. The XL series OCS from the XL4 on up for models three through six support high-speed outputs built in. And then either the XLE, XLT, or the XL series from the XL4 on up, even if you're using the model two, which is the relay version, you can add the HE-XHSQ option card to your system, and that will add the high-speed output capability to your system. Now, which products do not support high-speed outputs? Well, primarily that's the RCC family, but keep in mind the RCC 6512 does support high-speed outputs, but the rest of the RCC line does not. Okay, let's start with PWM. What is a PWM output? Well, a PWM output is typically, when we're talking about an OCS, a DC square wave signal at a fixed frequency, say 1000 hertz or 10,000 hertz, where the duty cycle will vary from zero to 100%. Okay, so the frequency stays fixed but the duty cycle varies from zero to 100%. Now, what is duty cycle? Duty cycle is, for the width of a pulse, what percentage of the time that uh, value is on and what percentage of the time that value is off. So if you have a pulse with a total period length, let's say of you know, 50 milliseconds, and that pulse is on for half of that time, 
then you're talking about a 50% duty cycle. If it's on for a quarter of that time, it's 25% duty cycle. If it's not on at all during that time, it's 0%. If it's on completely during the entire time, it's 100%. So that's what we mean by duty cycle. Now, functionally, a PWM output can act very similarly to how an analog output signal looks. Now it doesn't look anything like an analog output signal, but keep in mind what does an analog output signal typically do? Well, it, it sends an output, say 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts, and through that output the device that receives that signal can effectively scale that signal and replicate, say, an integer value. Okay, so that's similar with the PWM, but in this case, instead of a 4 to 20 milliamp output or a 0 to 10 volt output, we're talking about a pulse train where the receiving device is measuring, okay, the duty cycle of that signal, of that pulse, and then replicating more or less an integer based on whether that duty, where that duty cycle is between 0 and 100%. So, PWM can effectively act similarly to an analog signal in terms of how you use it. Okay, next let's talk about a frequency output. And this is very similar, but the difference here is you're going to typically fix your duty cycle at 50%, so the pulse is on for half the time and off for half the time at a given frequency, but you're going to vary your frequency. So instead of your frequency, say, being fixed at 1,000 hertz or 10,000 hertz, maybe your frequency varies from 0 to 1,000 hertz. And then the receiving device effectively measures the frequency, and then based on that frequency, kind of replicates an integer value similar to how you might otherwise do with an analog signal. So again, both PWM and frequency can be used to send to a secondary device, and then functionally they're going to act very much like an analog output signal would in terms of the fact that that receiving device is effectively interpreting an integer value either based on the duty cycle width in the case of a PWM signal or based on the specific frequency in the case of a frequency signal. All right, now let's talk about how would we configure in the OCS a PWM or a frequency output. Well, we're going to need to go to the local I.O. tab because this is an I.O. configuration type function. We're going to go into the module configuration for the Model 2, Model 3, Model 4, Model 5, whatever the case may be, or the Micro Series OCS. We're going to go to the Digital Output or PWM section. Now, one thing I will mention is, I mentioned Model 2 when I talked about configuration. Remember, Model 2 is relay output only, so if we're talking about the Model 2, you're going to have to use that HE-X HSQ output card to add high-speed output capability to a Model 2, for instance. But from Seascape, we're going to go into I.O. configuration. That's where we're going to configure our output type for Q1 and Q2. Because remember, we're talking about two high-speed outputs here. And if we're talking about configuring them for frequency or PWM, then we're going to select the radio button for PWM. Okay? And then ultimately, there will be registers, real-world registers, assigned to the high-speed output functions for duty cycle and frequency, and those will be assigned to percent %AQ registers. And then by manipulating those AQ registers for frequency and duty cycle, we can effectively either fix the frequency and vary the duty cycle, or we can fix the duty cycle and vary the frequency. Okay, once we have finished our hardware configuration, then it's a matter of, again, our programming, which I really just described, and that is, let's find the specific analog output registers that are tied to duty cycle and frequency for either output one or output two, depending on which one we're using, and then let's manipulate those registers to replicate our PWM output or our frequency output. Here's some examples, for instance. So let's say that you're wanting to manipulate your duty cycle value. Okay, well, the way the scaling is working in the OCS, the duty cycle register is scaled to 32,000. So for a 50% duty cycle, you're going to set the duty cycle register to 16,000, which is 50% of 32,000. 
For a 25% duty cycle, you're going to want to set it to 8,000, which is 25% of 32,000. So effectively, again, the OCS reads the duty cycle register, divides it by 32,000, and that's the percentage output that it's going to set for the duty cycle. Now let's talk about frequency. Okay, the frequency register is basically just set in hertz. So if you want to output 1,000 hertz, you set it to 1,000. If you want to set it to 10,000 hertz, you set it to 10,000. So pretty straightforward in terms of what you need to do with both the duty cycle and the frequency registers. Here's a note on the high-speed memory map. Whenever you're working with either the high-speed counter or the high-speed outputs, you need to know which real-world I.O. registers, you know, I's, Q's, A.I.'s, and A.Q.'s are being used by the high-speed output function or high-speed input function, depending on what you're working with. And so to find those specific values for those specific registers, you need to go to the user's manual for your particular OCS. So if you're working with an XL4, you're going to go to the a Horner website, you're going to go to the XL4 product page, and then under documentation, you're going to look for the full user's manual for the XL4. And then what you'll find when you look at the table of contents is you will find a complete chapter on high speed IO functions, including the high speed output functions. And in that chapter will be a complete description of operation and various charts and tables that show you which real-world I.O. registers have been assigned to the high-speed input and the high-speed output functions. Okay. Now, another important note, and that is for the XL series, the XL series can be used in both two-channel and four-channel mode. And when I say XL series, I'm really talking about the XL4 on up and the X5. Okay, so by default, they're typically in two channel high speed counter mode. If you want to use them in four channel high speed counter mode, you can do that. However, you need to do a firmware update to your unit to have it basically support four channel mode. And when you do that firmware update, effectively what you're doing is you're changing out the two channel file for a four channel file. When I say file, I'm talking about what's called the FPGA file. Every OCS product has an FPGA chip built into it that is used to handle all the high-speed functions, both input and output. And so if you need to go from two-channel mode to four-channel mode with an XL4, for instance, you need the FPGA file to be loaded as part of the firmware update that is associated with the four-channel mode. And then if you're not 100% sure what mode your OCS is running under, you can go to the system menu under status, scroll down, and you can see okay, this particular unit is in two-channel mode or it's in four-channel mode. And again, default is two-channel mode, but you can change it to four-channel typically, okay? Okay, what is the maximum frequency that is supported by the OCS that you're using? Okay, and you'll find different specifications in your cut sheets for specific models, but here's what we're looking at in general. So for the micro OCS family, just out of the box, they can support output frequencies up to 65K. All right, now they were constructed or built with output chips that can support up to 65K as standard. So that's what's available for the micro OCS. For the XL series, okay, when we're talking about models three, four, and five, okay, those particular IO models can only support built in up to 5K. All right, now in a lot of applications, that's plenty fast enough. You may only need a PWM signal up to 1K, or you may only need you know, a frequency signal at 5K or lower. Um, however, 3, 4, and 5 have output drivers for those I.O. versions that can't support anything faster than 5K. Now, the I.O. Model 6 for the XL series, that one can support up to 500 kilohertz. All right, so it has newer output drivers that can handle those higher speeds. All right, so depending on the OCS you're using, you may be limited in terms of the maximum frequency that that output driver can actually put out. Now, for those of you using the XL series, okay, XLE, XLT, or any of the XL series models, if you need to go faster, 
than what your maximum speed is allowed, you can add a high speed option card to your system. And this high speed output option card fits under the back cover. Now, you also can use this card to add high speed output capability to the relay model for the XL series, which is the model two. Of course, when you're talking about relays, you can't use a relay as a high speed output. But by adding this HSQ card to your system, even if you're using relay outputs, now those two high speed outputs, which have much faster high speed output capability, can be used for the two high speed outputs in the system. All right, so again, what functionality does this high speed output card add? Well, if you're using a Model 2 with relays, it adds basic and full high speed output capability to that model. If you're using the Model 3 through the 5, then effectively you're getting faster frequencies than what you would get with the, the built-in I.O. And then if you're needing a PWM signal or a frequency signal at 5 volts, remember 24 volts is the, stand, the standard voltage for the high-speed outputs. If you need a 5-volt version or a 5-volt signal, then adding the HSQ-5 option to your system can give you 5-volt outputs. Okay, and if you take a look at the maximum frequencies, you can see that 200 kilohertz is available as the maximum frequency for the standard HSQ, and 2 megahertz is the output frequency available for the HSQ-5 5 volt output version. Okay, so there's a way to extend the frequencies on your high speed outputs if you're talking about XL series products, either XLE or XLT or any of the XL4 on up. Okay, next we're going to do a demo of frequency output and a demo of PWM output. And PWM output demos are a little harder to show with my setup here. So for the most part, I'm going to be showing you a demonstration of frequency outputs. Okay, so what is the process we need to use that I'll be using here when we do this demonstration? Well, the first thing we have to do is go through the Seascape configuration process. The next thing we need to do is assign variables for duty cycle and frequency. And then lastly, we need to tie those variables of duty cycles and of duty cycle and frequency to the specific analog output registers that are allocated for that particular high speed output. So if you're talking about high speed output number one uh, on an XL7, which I'm going to be using for my demonstration. When I went to the user's manual and found the chapter on high speed inputs and high speed outputs, I found that my duty cycle and frequency for output number one is AQ421 and 423. And my duty cycle and frequency registers for high speed output number two are AQ431 and AQ433. So let's go ahead and do our demonstration. All right, let me go ahead and fire up Seascape here. Okay, so let's start with the I.O. configuration. All right, so I'm using an XL7 here. I'm gonna go ahead under Local I.O. under the Configuration button here, Module Setup, and then I'm going to go under Digital Output slash PWM. Okay, so the first step is, and I'm going to go ahead and configure output number two for PWM slash high speed counting. Okay, so for output number two, I'm going to configure PWM as my option for output two. All right, so that's the first step. And really, when you talk about high speed output and frequency, that's all the configuration that's required. Okay, so really I'm done from a PWM or frequency output standpoint when it comes to configuration. Okay, the next step is I need to create variables for duty cycle and frequency. All right, and I've done that. So I've got a variable here called HSQ2 duty cycle and HSQ2 frequency. And these are double integer values that are unsigned. Okay, and they need to be tied to the specific analog output registers that are allocated for that function in the user's manual of my particular OCS. I'm using an XL7. So again, as I mentioned earlier, 
AQ431 and AQ433 are the analog output registers respectively for duty cycle and frequency for high speed output number two. Okay, so I did my configuration, I created my variables, I tied those variables to the specific analog output registers for that function. Now let's go ahead and take a look at my XL7 that's running this particular program. And I've got my handy dandy IO simulator here. All right, you can see that as well. And remember, we're looking at output number two, Q2. So really what we're gonna be watching is this particular LED that's number two here, that's actually wired to Q2. All right, so let's start by setting our duty cycle, which is scaled to 32,000 counts. So if I want a 50% duty cycle, I'm gonna to set to this to 16,000. Okay. Next, I need to set my frequency. So let's say, and again, we're gonna be using our eyes here to kind of see this frequency result. So let me set it to something low that our eyes can easily see. Let me just set the frequency to one hertz. Okay, so now you've noticed that we have a pretty obviously that our output number two is flashing at a one hertz rate. Okay, let's go ahead and modify the frequency. Let's go ahead and go to two hertz. We can see it changing. Let's go to five hertz. Okay, we can see that as well. And I would guess that we can probably see flashing up to about 10 hertz with our naked eye. Anything faster than that is probably going to be difficult to detect that it's actually flashing. It'll just look like it's on continuously. Okay, so in this case, I've set my duty cycle to 50% by setting it to a value of 16,000, and then I've varied my frequency. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to show you a PWM demonstration, but let's go ahead and make an attempt at that. All right, so let me go ahead and make some changes here and try and show you duty cycle. So let me go ahead and change my frequency to one hertz and let's start varying our duty cycle. Actually, let's do this. Let's set it to a thousand hertz. All right. Now it just looks like that output is on continuously. But when you're looking at an LED output, and again, this is just for demonstration purposes, varying the duty cycle makes really what it does is it kind of varies the brightness or the perceived brightness of my eye. So if I set my duty cycle down to, let's say, a really low value, let's say 4,000, we should notice the brightness of that LED going down considerably. Yeah, you can see that, right? The brightness of that LED or perceived brightness of that LED went down. And then if I set this to a really high value, let's say like 30,000, you should be able to see that brightness considerably get brighter. Okay, and the reason that is, is because the voltage is on for a much larger percentage of the time at 30,000 than it is at 1,000, for instance. Okay, so this would be a PWM application where we fix the frequency and we vary the duty cycle. All right, let's go back to our material. All right, next let's take a look at set point controlled output. So, so far we've talked about PWM, we've talked about frequency. Now let's talk about set point controlled output. So what are set point controlled outputs? Well, the, this is a mode in which the OCS high speed outputs can be turned on or off independent of ladder scan and the on and off point where they're turned on and off is tied to a high speed counter accumulator set point. Okay, so we might be using a high-speed counter connected to an encoder where the encoder is telling us a particular position or the position of a machine or an apparatus. And then we may decide that we want to turn an output on precisely at 30,000 counts and precisely off at 31,000 counts, for instance, or something like that. Then by using a set point controlled output, we can accomplish that. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be an encoder as my high-speed input. It could be a totalizer where we're counting up using our high-speed counter and then at a certain set point for that high-speed counter when the totalizer equals 1,000, boom, we want to turn an output on. And we want to do that very reliably and precisely regardless of where we happen to be in the 
logic scan. So normally when we turn an output on or off manually in our ladder scan, you know, we're if our scan rate is five milliseconds and our output is achieved, the point at which we turn that output on could be somewhere five or 10 milliseconds from when we actually reach that total in our high speed counter. Whereas if we use a set point controlled output, it's exactly at the time, you know, microseconds from the time in which we reach that particular value, the output is going to turn on. Okay, so set point controlled outputs are very precise on and off control of those outputs based on when the high speed counter accumulator reaches a specific set point. So that's what we're talking about there. Okay, so what's the configuration look like? You know, we always got to start by configuration. Well, we're going to go back into our local I.O. tab, go back to the output configuration, and we're going to select HSC output as our radio button for that particular function. So instead of selecting PWM, we're going to select HSC output. All right, now for the XL series to configure whether the output turns on or turns off or toggles based on achieving the high speed counter accumulator set point. To set that part of the configuration, we actually have to leave the high speed output dialog and go to the high speed counter input dialog. And at the very bottom of that, that's where we can configure what we want our match to be. When we have a match, do we want to turn the high speed output on? Do we want to turn it off or do we want to toggle? Now, in the case of the micro OCS, you don't actually have to go to the high speed input section to configure the match type. You can do it right there from the high speed output configuration dialog with a pull down that gives you those same choices on, off or toggle but it also gives you an additional choice of generating a pulse of a particular width based on that function, that high speed output, output function. So again, with the XL series, you can either turn the output on, you can turn it off, or you can toggle it when you hit the set point. With the micro series, you have those three choices plus the ability to generate a pulse of a specific width. All right, so once you've done your configuration, the next thing you need to do again is fire up the manual for your particular OCS and look for the analog output match values. All right, now for the XL series, you have two match values per output that you can configure or access. You don't have to use them both, but you can use up to two. For the micro series, I believe you've only got one match value. All right, now another thing you'll want to use in your configuration or in your program, I should say, is you're going to want to find the qubit that's been assigned so you can manually reset the output. So for instance, let's say you've set your match to on. So whenever your accumulator reaches a preset point that's in the match one value, for instance, you're going to turn the output on. Well, how do I turn the output off? Well, you do that with one of the cues that's assigned to that function. So by turning on that output cue in your program, you can then reset the output that was turned on through the match function. Okay, another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a percent %i bit that has been assigned so that you can monitor the state of the high speed output. So you won't actually use the Q1 or the Q2 bit, for instance, to see whether that match has happened. You're actually going to use an assigned percent %i bit to see that the match has happened. Okay. And again, all this information can be found in the chapter of the manual for your particular OCS that covers the high speed IO. All right, so now let's do a demonstration for the set point controlled output. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start with configuration, just like we did last time for PWM and frequency. Next, we're going to have to assign our variables. Now, in this case, I'm going to want to assign variables for my match values. I'm going to want to assign variables for my output reset so I can clear 
that high speed output after I've set it through a match function. And I'm also going to want to assign a variable so I can monitor the current status of that match value. And then there's one more thing that I don't have shown here in the chart. I'm also going to go ahead and go ahead and find the accumulator value for the high speed counter I'm using so I can kind of monitor that on the screen as well. All right. And then once I have found all those AI and AQ and I and Q values for my particular high speed output, then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that those are all mapped to the variables that I've created. So that's the process I'm going to follow. All right, now let's go back to Seascape and take a look here. Okay, so again, we start with configuration. So let's go to configuration. Let's go to the local I.O. Back to the I.O. config here and module setup. And again, we start with the high speed out. Now in my demonstration, I'm going to be working with high speed output number one as the set point controlled output. So I have set it for HSC one output. And because I'm working with an XL seven here to set my match type, I can't do it right from here to set my match type. I need to go into the high speed counter configuration to the very bottom and set my match here. And I've set it for on right now. Okay, now you'll notice that in my demonstration, I'm using quadrature. All right, so I've got an encoder connected up and I'm using the encoder that's kind of built into my handy dandy IO simulator. Okay. All right. So that's, that is the configuration that is required. Now the next step is to find the real world IQ, AI, and AQ values in my user's manual and get those assigned to variables. Okay, so I've got my variables. First, my variables. Here is my high speed counter number one accumulator. Okay, that's tied to AI401. I went ahead and assigned the clear bit so I can go ahead and clear that accumulator when I need to. Okay, that happens to be Q1603. I have created variables for, there's two matches available, two match values available. I've configured both of those, assigned variables for both of those, mapping them to the appropriate AQ values. And then I have my output state that I can monitor. That's gonna tell me if my uh, high speed set point controlled output is actually on or off at any given time. And then I've got the same thing, except this time a bit that I can use to reset that high speed output. Okay, so again, configuration, assign variables, map the appropriate IQ, AI, AQ to those variables based on the data in the user's manual for my particular OCS. All right, now let's head to the demo here. All right, and let's take a look at our set point controlled output. All right, now this time, it's actually output number one that I'm gonna be looking at. Okay, so output number one is what I'm gonna be looking at for my set point controlled output. So currently my accumulator is at zero, and then my output is set to turn on whenever the accumulator reaches 100. So let me go ahead and manually change my accumulator here using my built-in encoder. Boom, I got to 100. Now you can see my high speed output has turned on. Output number one physically has turned on. Then I also have my indicator here that's tied to that percent I bit that shows the indication status. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset the output using that button there. And that's doing it in ladder scan. All right. And then I'll continue on. And I, when I reach 200, we should see the output turn on again. And this is because I'm in turn on mode. Oh, no, nope, 300 is where I need to reach. Okay, there we go. We reached 300 and the output turned on again and I can reset it. Okay, so very straightforward. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at toggle mode next. And to do toggle mode, I'll need to go back into Seascape and actually change my configuration to toggle mode instead of on mode for my match style here. Okay, so back into configuration, 
local IO, IO config, module setup, and then to set my match mode, I have to do that in the high speed counter config. So I'm going to change it from on to toggle. Okay. And then I need to re download this program. Now it's going to give me a warning telling me I'm changing my IO configuration. And since I'm talking to Ethernet, then that is a potential problem. So it gives me this warning, but that's okay. I didn't change my Ethernet configuration. All right, so now Seascape is changing the match mode for my high speed set point controlled output function. Okay, we've completed the download. Let's go back to our overhead view. Go back to our set point controlled output. Okay, so we still have our match value set for a 100. That's match number one and match number two set to 300. So let's see what happens when we start changing our encoder value. When we get to 100, we should see that turn on. We do. Now let's see what happens when we get to 300. It turns off. Okay, so in toggle mode, it alternates between on and off with the match set points. Okay, so that is a couple different match modes with our set point controlled outputs. All right, so that's the material I wanted to cover for you today. All right, so I want to remind you that our YouTube sessions that we have here are every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. You can watch those live, or you can, of course, always watch the replay. Now, this particular session wasn't actually live because of my travel schedule. So I'm not going to bring in Casey Gardner for questions and answers because, again, it's not a live session. So you can still ask questions, but again, do it using the comment section. And then we will, in non-real time, of course, we'll get those questions answered for you quickly. But again, you can see us every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Now, this month and leaking into November a little bit, we've got this how-to series. Last week, we covered Modbus RTU Slave or Modbus TCP Server. Today, of course, we're high-speed outputs. Next week, we've got using trend graphs and then WebMI for the micro OCS, and then Seascape data parsing. So those are the sessions scheduled for the next few weeks. And don't forget to join us next week for using trends on the Horner OCS. And once again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. That'll allow you, especially if you select the bell icon, it'll allow you to get notifications whenever we go live or whenever we put up a new pre-recorded video. And once again, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next week.